as you can see there with the palm work off concrete now fully set and I can start now with the final finishing as you'll notice also I've um, fitted the old garage door to my compound now what I want to do here is I want to put a cover over this area to hide the gap and the mechanisms and such um, trouble is everything is steel and if I do into that, I'm going to restrict the wheels, so I can't do that. And these are too far apart. Um, plus I need to come up a little bit further than that, so that I'm clearing these faults. Um, so really I need to do the thickness of that, and then the piece on top. So, this is how I'm going to get around it. Again, using the power grab, CT1. I'm going to bond a first piece to the metal rail like this using a couple of clamps to bond it to the steel like so and this afternoon when that's cured I will put the next one on over the top of them, bonding it again the same way with CT1. And that's the last piece. If okay, so that's that done now, I'll leave that a um, couple of hours. Uh, and then come back and uh, put the top one on. It doesn't need a couple of hours, it'll probably grab uh, within a few minutes, but I'm going for lunch. Now I've got some props that I'm going to use to try and hold this thing up. Um, but it's very long, very flexible, um, so I'm going to have to adapt the prop somehow in order to hold it. Now I've just added some uh, pieces of box section or channel section type aluminium what I had left over, just cut it up, it looks like it would be suitable um, and just tape it to the top of the clamps, you'll see as I'm doing it and um, hopefully it'll work right well, let's have a go then.
I'm just going to add to you, you can't always buy exactly what you need for the job you want. Uh, it's just not on the shelf. You've got to learn to um, manufacture your own, adapt things. Um, at the end of the top um, box that I've just put over the veil of the dollar, um, need capping. There isn't any caps or anything like that. So, a little bit of the PVC wall cladding, cut it to shape, that'll cap part of it. Then I want to box round it. Now that white round I want pure white to go with the rest. So, bit of rim water pipe. Come with me. So that'll fit there. And I want to cap that corner off. Clean. It's just a standard flat edge. Yeah, it's quite good, that one. Plastic, going to be no problem. Just take your time. Looking on that, super glue on this. Right, the last part of this project um, is draft proofing the inside. Now obtaining the draft proof proved to be quite a challenge on its own. Um, one metre wide, one metre long rather, and uh, no problem. Anywhere, everywhere. But I needed them two plus metres, two metres, 2.2 metre, etc. And then you're moving into the realms of industrial draft excluding. So then you're moving into the realms of industrial pricing. I don't want to pay such a lot of money like that. You know, I've already paid out enough for this as it is, not just to draft proof it. Um, I searched the web, searched the web, and eventually I found a company and they're going to charge me more for delivery than I would have expected to pay normally originally for the draft proofing. Um, but this seems to be the only place that I could find it at this length, within a reasonable price frame. Uh, until the very end when suddenly I realised or learned that one of my local suppliers that I never even checked sell it. 
and sell it at a really good price. Tool station. Right, have a look at this. Now most places were quoting me 70 to 80 pounds for the draft booking. Now look at that. One inch bush, industrial rated, aluminium body. I've got the white one because the rest of it is white. And two noisy. 2.2 meters long, or just under 2.2. And as you can see, you pretty much all of it. I'm going to have to put a little bit on the end there, um, but that doesn't matter. Um, the two uplights are more than long enough, so I've got plenty to come off of it. Less than a tenner, each one. So, bear that in mind if you need to do it. Okay, I've got a good long bristle, um, but I've already partially closed it up with PVC boarding. Um, so I don't have a lot left to cover up, uh, but a little bit is enough to let the draft in. Um, now there is some difference in the gap from when it's open to when it's closed. Because of that wall is off, the whole door moves a little bit unevenly to open. Um, so it's widening and narrowing as it goes. Um, unfortunately, when it's closed, it's the widest gap. If it had been the other way around, then I could have used probably a solid with just a sponge on it or something, and it had pulled into it as it closed. But the other way around, whatever's going to touch the door when it's closed, it's going to touch it hard when it's opened, which means it's going to want to stop the door moving. So, brush was the only answer. Okay, so let's get this on. It's very simple. I'm just going to cut it to size, put it into place, and with the little screws, screw it on. That's all it is. the ends up clean. Now then, this one, I'm going to move the plastic plate. If you can see there, I've got a nice gap when it is closed. But when it's open, it's a very tight gap. Now when I'm opening it with a brush on, it's going to bend that brush towards that gap. And it's going to jam. So I need a much bigger gap to let this brush some space for it to bend into. I'll go with that first. Take this thing completely off. Now when cutting traffic, screw them like this, push the brush out of the way at first. Cut the metal with an axle. The brush, you can just snip with a pair of snips. You try and cut it with this and it's just going to get in the way and tangle up. Ordinary pair of wire snips. Does the job no problem. Okay, that one now go in. Now as for the bottom. I'm not going to do draft excluding there. What I'm going to do is continue the vinyl. Because it's thick, hard vinyl, very hard wearing, I'm going to turn it over and let it come back on itself to hit the concrete underneath, which will keep me that curve, and then bond it down flat. That will give me a bevel turn that will push against the door a little. Um, the glides on the bottom can't be moved down really anyway. So that push will keep a reasonably good seal. Um, again, it's not going to be airtight, but it will be good enough and hardware enough. 
I'll put a brush there, it'll just get in the way and it'll get down fairly quickly. So there is no point in that. But that'll have to wait until I get some matching vinyl off another job. Which I will. It's a common colour. I'm certainly not buying any. Tight against there to be interesting to see what happens when I open and close that. Mm. Now, then, I'm going to join this bit onto there, um, but I don't want to join a bit of brush as well. What you're going to do when you're going to ex extend a brush, which is what I'm actually doing. Is cut the brush back. Let's remove a couple of screws here first. That's it. Pull the brush out. If we can't put it being so tight. There. Like that. Not to be too much. Then just cut a bit off. That's it. Then push it back in. There. Then, put on your next piece, like that, put on the extension, and cut the thing level, and there. Yeah. And you won't get a weak gap, that's the name. There, and as you can see, it's about as sealed as I could expect it to be. Bearing in mind, I used to have the up and over door, which was gaps everywhere. At least this one is 90% sealed. And like I've said, I've got this gap at the bottom, which I've closed off the ends, so there shouldn't be any through drafts um, but I've got this gap at the bottom which I will just get some vinyl and cover it like that gluing it into place I'll cut back the existing a few inches so I've got some thing to glue onto properly um, and curl the end over but there certainly doesn't need to be a video on that well it's now safe to say after what? Seven videos? It's now finished. The workshop sliding door is complete. And I've got to say, I've learned quite a bit doing this. Um, I've done things that I've never done before, tried materials I've never tried before. And as, as I said in the beginning, generally working with steel is not my thing. Um, I've got to say, it's been a project that before I started it, I was really, mm -hmm, do I want to endeavour to do this one? Um, but once I jumped into it, things just started coming together. A lot of thought beforehand, um, but once it got into it, it seemed the thinking about it first got things going. And everything has worked out nicely. So, I can now have the door closed, open, or in between, which was the main issue. And I don't have all this overhang, I don't have problems with headroom. I can get boards in a lot easier. Um, and the floor is nice and level around it. But it's quite stiff now because of the draft grouping. Now, for keeping it ajar when I'm working upstairs and still maintaining the security level, a simple solution is my suction hand bolts at this point here. Put it on, and people can get to that point, but they can't open it anymore, so they're not going to get in. No matter what they do, they can't get in. 
Right, okay, well, once again, I've got to thank you for watching me, for going through the whole process. Um, if there is any questions that you'd like to ask, please just shove them in the comments uh, box below. Um, and if you'd like to make any suggestions, if you'd like to say anything, shove it in the comments. I don't mind comments, and I answer to them all. Um, I assure you that. Um, also, if you like it, tell me. Just click a like. It helps. All right, well, again, thanks for watching us, and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.